Welcome to This is My Architecture. I'm Rebecca Choi, Solutions Architect from AWS. Together with me today, we've got Michael Leach, who is the Enterprise Architect of Melco Resource and Entertainment. Welcome, Michael. So please tell us a bit about what does Melco do? Okay, so Melco is an owner, operator, and developer of entertainment and casino resort facilities. I've heard that you've developed an application for Melco customers called Melco Club. Will yes. you please share a bit on that application? Okay, so yeah, we've, we've developed an application for our customers. Uh, it gives them a personal and holistic uh, interaction with our brand. Um, we have it in two different variants. One is a WeChat variant, which is popular for our mainland China market. Mm -hmm. And we also have uh, it in a standard iOS or Android application, which is uh, predominantly for our international market. Right, so what does the high-level solutions architecture look like? So at a high level, uh, we went with a serverless architecture. Um, it involves services such as API Gateway, Lambda, and DynamoDB, along with other third part, key th third-party services. Right, OK. So is there, what's the rationale behind of choosing serverless architecture? So Malco Club is a new application. We wanted to get up and running as quick as possible. Um, so it was, it was fast to, um, to, to start. And we didn't have to provision uh, a whole bunch of infrastructure and, and support that infrastructure. Uh, the other, the other reason um, was that we wanted to uh, we wanted dynamic scaling, so mm. we wanted the architecture to respond to the customer demand. Right. So let's double click into the solution design. Would you please show us the application flow? Sure. So we have our iOS or Android application, Malco Club, and our WeChat mobile app. They both call an endpoint. On a, at API Gateway. Right. So once the um, once the request has um, made it to API Gateway, um, the authorizer service, which is hosted in Lambda, is mm -hmm. invoked uh, for member related services. Right. Yeah. So once the um, service is invoked, the token is decoded and checked or validated against other, our other systems. Right, so after the user request is authorized, where does the request go? So once the request has been authorized, it will continue to the relevant Lambda service. So one of these services could be uh, hotel reservations, could be um, dining reservations or payments. Right. So where do you choose to put your persistent data? So we store our data in DynamoDB. Um, so if a function requires access to that data, it will call Dyna the DynamoDB endpoint. Is there any particular reason of choosing DynamoDB? Yeah, so we wanted a database uh, solution that was fully managed um, so that we didn't have to focus on performance tuning uh, and other maintenance activities. Um, we also quite like the, the fact that DynamoDB has individual ta table scaling. Right. So you also mentioned that the Melco Club applications contains of different functions like hotel reservations, dining, booking. What is the architecture approach you've taken to deploy those services onto the Lambda? So we went with a common microservices approach. Um, we separated these uh, key functionalities into different capabilities. So in practical terms, we deployed separate Lambda functions for each, each separate capability. Mm. So this gives us the ability for the architecture to scale independently. Right. It also gives you the flexibility of have of having different release cycles of different functions as well. Yeah, right? that's right. So based on our business requirements, uh, we can we can change our release cycle. Hotel bookings may may require a release uh, sooner than the um, dining reservations uh, service. Right, that's great. So there is also a need for the Meco Club applications to integrate with third parties. How do you secure the API between the Lambda functions and third parties API? Yeah, so most of our third parties have a SOAP or a REST API. Um, so we, Lambda will call us call their APIs directly. So in line to the request, 
uh, Secrets Manager is called um, to obtain the credentials for the third party. Mm -hmm. um, we we chose uh, Secrets Manager because we can we can manage the whole life cycle yep. of our uh, of our credentials. Right, I think it also gives you the benefits of this not necessary to hard coding the secrets in your applications, right? Yeah, that's right. So it's more secure. Yeah. So um, that's great. So thanks for sharing the details. Is there any plan to further optimize the solutions architecture? Yeah, so we're, we're looking at um, EKS, the managed Kubernetes service from AWS. Um, that will give us the ability to deploy more complex services. Um, and also um, we can we can remove some of the constraints around the Lambda functionality for processing time or memory constraints. That's great. So thank you very much for your time today, Michael. Thanks for watching. This is my architecture. <laughs>